Well, we knew there was court-ordered mediation scheduled in the Bishop Eddie Long case. But the time, place, and details of the settlement talks were kept top secret until now. Our I-team has uncovered when the talks took place and learned about the explosive interaction between Bishop Long and the four young men suing him for sexual misconduct. Senior I-team reporter Dale Russell has the exclusive story tonight. Dale? Russ, it was three weeks ago today in the early morning hours, a black Lincoln town car, engine running, sat in front of Bishop Eddie Long's house. Not long after, Bishop Long arrived at a top-secret location for the first day of back-to-back -back mediation talks. Talks that turned to an angry face-to-face -face confrontation. Allegations and attacks made on me. Last September, Bishop Eddie Long told his congregation that he was going to battle allegations of sexual misconduct. This thing, I'm going to fight. That public fight is now embroiled in private settlement talks. You take advantage of something so innocent and pure for your own lust or your own desires. That's a monster. The I-team was first to tell you how Jamal Paris and three other young men filed suit against Bishop Long and his 10,000-seat New Birth Missionary Baptist Church. The lawsuits claim that the bishop lavished money, trips, and gifts on the young adults while having sexual contact with them. Enough is enough. This man, is he's doing too much damage to the lives of young men, and it's time that he stops. But I am not the man that's being portrayed on the television. In all four of the lawsuits, Bishop Long admitted he was a mentor who traveled with the young men and at times shared a room. He denied any sexual activity and vowed to battle the allegations. I am not going to try this case in the media. Uh, it will be tried in the court of justice. But in the very first court hearing, Long's lawyer said both sides were ready to resolve the case. And the case could benefit from early mediation. Court records showed the mediation was set for the middle of February. We will still see settlement talks in February. Well, the court ordered mediation. And you'll go through with it? Well, it's court ordered. We'll all be there. According to sources familiar with the case, they were all there. Our sources say the mediation took place a week ahead of schedule in a top secret undisclosed location. And sources say during mediation, all four young men angrily confronted Bishop Long. According to our sources, the back-to-back -back days of mediation were three weeks ago. I'm told all four young men and their attorneys, along with the bishop, church, and insurance lawyers, sat down together in the same room. A source familiar with the discussions described the atmosphere as heated, with a lot of emotion and anger. I was told the young men cursed the bishop as they described in graphic detail what they allege he did to them, and the bishop never responded. Would that be unusual for all the plaintiffs to be in the same room with the defendant hashing this out? No, I don't think so. No surprise to Tom Arthur, an Emory University law professor and expert on mediation. Arthur is not involved in the long case, but agreed to talk about mediation in general. I was told that it got very heated inside that room. Well, I think that's often happens in a case, particularly involving individuals. People are mad, and people get it off their chest. And a good mediator, I think, is somebody skillful enough to let the people, as they say, vent. Arthur says once those parties vent, a good mediator will try to bring them back together, talk over the strengths and weaknesses of each side's case, minimize who wins and loses, and look for a way for both sides to settle and walk away without a trial. This could all be settled, and there could be confidentiality clauses, and the people that are going to that church, the people that have followed this, may never know exactly what happened. Is that fair, that it could happen that way? Well, that's a good question. Uh, let's just put it this way. Uh, often that's the price of peace. Uh, attorneys on both sides of this case have said they will not discuss the settlement talks. Settlement talks that we are told that will continue. Russ, Amanda? Well, Dale, a lot of people think looking at this from the outside in that it's all about the money. Is it?
Uh, that's, I do think a lot of people believe that as they go into this thing and look at this thing. But as Tom Arthur says, yes, many times these cases can be about money, and that ultimately is going to be a part of a settlement talks uh, in, in any case like this. But he says there can also be a lot more to it, e emotionally, psychologically, that, as we heard here tonight, that the young men having an opportunity to sit down face-to-face -face with a man that they could end up in court with if these talks don't go through. All right. Dale, thanks very much. We know you'll keep on top of this. We will be following it. All right. Dale, thanks.